Hey, so I just wanted to uh, announce two more nodes that I've made for Substance Designer, which is the Plant Propagate and the Plant Splint nodes. And they're just going to help continue facilitating uh, some foliage art workflows within Substance Designer. We're going to take a look in this video at what both of those nodes do uh, more specifically, but kind of an overview of what they do with the Plant Propagate is it allows you to input an atlas that's already been created and essentially separate out an individual cutout from that atlas. And you can again use this multiple times to cut out multiple different pieces. And for the plant splint node, uh, sometimes when you get a scan or an atlas, um, the pieces aren't exactly straight and it can be difficult to use sometimes. So what this node does is allows the user to essentially unbend or unfold those particular cutouts and straighten everything out to be used in another atlas. And so if that sounds up your alley, take a look at the description below and I'll have links to the Gumroad pages for both of those. Now, once you head on over to the links, again, this is just for the plant propagate, but I also do have a Gumroad page for plant splint as well. Take a look at uh, some of the write-up for these nodes here, see if they kind of align with uh, what you're interested in and just you get to see more functionality very quickly at a glance on how they actually work. And if it looks like it's something that you're interested in, you're able to go on over to the right hand side, select the licensing option that works best for your financial situation. And then once you go through with that, this will take you to a download page where you can access the SBS AR or the SBS as well, depending on uh, if you're using the professional and studio licenses. The SBS AR file um, is the only thing you're gonna get with the freelance one. So go ahead, download those and make sure to put the SBS AR files in a very specific uh, file destination. It doesn't really matter where you put these in your directory, just make sure they're gonna be in an area that you don't really move around too much um, because this is what we're gonna use to uh, reference essentially in Substance Designer so we can add these to our library. All right, so I've jumped on over to Substance Designer and now let's look at how we set up uh, and add those nodes to our library. So let's go on over to edit and preferences and then let's click on projects and then hit on down to where it says library here this is where um, our library in substance designer is referencing all of the nodes that uh, we're able to use and search up when we're using substance designer so you'll see that i already have two uh, custom directories in my paths here and to go and add a new one, if you click on this little plus, and then go and select the folder that you've actually saved those uh, Substance Archive files in, that's going to then go and add uh, a new path here. And now you should be able to go and search up whatever nodes you have in that directory. Now before you're done this dialog, uh, make sure you click Apply first. That's going to apply all the changes. And then you can go ahead and click OK. Okay, so now that we have Substance Designer looking in the correct place for these nodes, let's go and actually start using them. So the one way we can do this is by actually going down into the library and you can see I've already searched for plant and that's gonna bring up any plant related nodes that we have Substance Designer referencing. And we can also go and hit spacebar, which I'm sure you're probably more familiar with and also start to type in plant. So the first node I'd like to uh, showcase in this video here is the plant propagate node. And if we read the description, it says that it's going to allow the users to separate and select individual atlas cutouts. And this is gonna be useful for taking existing atlases and actually separating out those atlases uh, pieces individually. And so this is gonna be useful for allowing us to basically take uh, these existing atlas pieces you can see this is the atlas we're going to be using in this example and individually cut out each one of these pieces this is useful if we want to either just take one of these individually and create our own texture sheet with that or if we want to actually start you know picking and choosing a couple of these and compile those into an atlas of our own doing so that's what this node is going to allow us to do now you'll see that uh, i have got a ton of individual inputs from this atlas here uh, but we don't have nearly that many inputs so if i select the node and come on over to the channels uh, header here 
I'm going to just enable all of these. I generally try and keep the ones that are maybe less used um, disabled by default, just because you know it can be a bit of a pain to, it's either a pain to enable them or disable them. And unfortunately not everybody's gonna be happy, but you can go ahead and um, save uh, a preset up here once you've got it set up how you like it. And then you can load that preset very quickly every time uh, you want to use this node. So just a bit of a heads up there. All right, and I've just gone ahead now and set this up so you don't have to watch me do that. And we're going from this cutout here, which is this base color. If I double click on the output of this node now, you'll see that we're just gonna get one cutout shape. And so this functionality is gonna be very similar to the built-in Atlas splitter node if you've used that, uh, with the caveat that this is a little bit more streamlined and provides a little bit more functionality tailored to uh, that foliage workflow. So let's take a look at our first parameter. If I double click on this and I start to slide through this, you'll see that it's going to increase by whole values. And with each new value, it's actually going to show a new cutout that's on this atlas. And if I take a look at our grid view here, and I'll just zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole thing, this number is going to correspond to the index on this sheet here. So this is going to be the 10th item from you know top to bottom, left to right, right? So we go from uh, the top row, and then once we get over to the end, we carry on over to the next row, and we work our way through like that. So you'll see that as I increase this, right, this is going to be the selection uh, for this cutout. Now the selection I wanna use is actually 19, just because it's going to be easy for demonstration purposes. But say this is the cutout that we wanted, and we're happy with this, right? What else can we do? Well, you'll notice that it's going to provide the transformation GUI here. And the reason that is, is sometimes, depending on the scan, it might kind of offset your piece a little bit, or maybe it's not oriented correctly or how you want it to. So this node is going to provide you the opportunity to kind of correct that here prior to any further calculations um, that you maybe want to do on this. So. You'll see that I can go and start to move this around. I can even scale it, you know, just typical transformation 2D stuff and rotate as well. Now, the reason that um, we've got this next uh, option here, this next parameter, is for this rotation um, functionality. You'll notice that as I swap over to the normal view and I start to rotate this, it's going to update the normals based on uh, like the proper rotation. Essentially, it's going to provide us with proper rotation of a normal map so that we don't have to do this calculation on our own outside of the node. It's just gonna handle that on its own. You don't have to worry about that. So just make sure that you provide it with the proper normal format that you're inputting and it will handle the rest for you. Now let's go back to our transform and I'm just going to increase this two times so that we're going to get a much bigger scale, right? We've got something that is a little bit nicer to see. And now the final parameter of the node I'd like to show you is the padding distance. This is going to allow you to, as the name suggests, just do some pixel padding. Again, this might uh, just be enough for you. You just wanted to cut out one of the uh, cutouts or a couple of them and export those as individual leaf textures. So I wanted to make sure that we have some padding functionality in here, just in case um, that's something that you were looking to do. And again, this is going to work across all of the input texture channels. Uh, you don't have to worry about any pixel bleeding or uh, any of this stuff here. It should just work for you. So that's a pretty useful node if we have an existing atlas and uh, we wanna cut out one or two pieces from that. And chances are, if you uh, want to combine a bunch of these into another atlas, you're gonna be using a couple of these propagate nodes to find the pieces that you like. Now you may run across an issue though, if you're using some scans or maybe you've gotten some bakes from somebody else and they haven't taken the proper time to um, straighten out a lot of the foliage, uh, you'll find that they have some curves or bends in them. And it's not critical most of the time, but as you'll know, it's, it's a lot easier to work with foliage that's been straightened out in the cutout or the atlas, and then we can go and start to bend and you know contort that 
in our actual 3D mesh. So that's what the next node is going to do for us. If we take a look at plant splint and I select that, this is going to allow us to essentially straighten out that curve. And again, it's going to work across all of uh, the input texture channels. So let's just go enable all of the channels here first. And what I'd like to do is making sure that I have a uh, material connection mode enabled. If I just select this, I can go and just plug all of that in. I don't need to worry about doing it individually. All of the plant nodes as well as uh, plant press will have this nice functionality. So you don't have to worry about um, basically ever plugging in anything individually anymore once you get into the ecosystem. So now let's take a look. And we'll see that it hasn't done anything different, but we do have some different GUI elements. And these are going to be essentially the anchor points, which will allow us to start positioning and straightening out this uh, image here. So you'll see that if I take this middle one and I start to move it over, right, we're going to be able to start to bend and warp this image here. Now it's a little extreme. And you'll find that um, as you're straightening all of this out, right, it's really useful, but kind of tough to see how straight is, you know, straight. You don't really have a point of reference for this piece here. So what we have in the plant splint node down at the bottom is this curve guide. And if we double click on that, you'll see that it's going to give us exactly dead center of the texture sheet. And it's going to have the names and the labels for each one of these points. And under the curve guide header here, we have the ability to go ahead and uh, play around with all of that. So we can change that if we want to make that maybe a little bit more visible, depending on what the color of our atlas is. I can also change the point size of these. And again, I can even make them larger than one if I wanted to. And I can even play around with the curve thickness. So under the hood, essentially what we're doing is mapping this to a spline node. And that's just going to show you uh, kind of what the spline is doing across the image. Now I find that the curve is maybe a little too um, distracting. I think that's gonna be good. Now, before we start straightening things out, what I would like to acknowledge is that um, this piece feels like it could be kind of situated a little bit better prior to us straightening it out, right? If I'm going to go and follow this kind of center stem line, I feel like we could move this over previous to uh, getting into the splint node versus me having to move over all of these, you know, curve pieces here and then trying to figure out, okay, how much did I offset that? Should I do more or should I do less? So when you're using this node, just pay a little bit of attention to what you're trying to, you know, where you're trying to straighten this out because if you start to play around with this node, right? Be aware that it does introduce some skew um, in some of the pixels because just by the very nature of um, straightening and mapping things out to a spline, um, that's just going to happen. So let's go back to the propagate node and I'm just going to kind of move it off to the right just a little bit so that it generally kind of aligns with that center stem. And this is going to be a much better leaf to um, start to actually align or straighten out. Now coming back to the splint node, what I'm going to do is actually just work with the points uh, coordinates here in the parameters. You can also play around with the GUI, but I find I can get some more pixel precision using these GUI elements, or sorry, using the parameters. And I'm just going to increase the X value of the fifth point. And I'm going to maybe bring back the X on the fourth point there. And maybe on, let's do maybe something like uh, the second point, I can kind of bring that up on the X as well. And for the first point, and actually, you know what, for the first point, I'll just demonstrate that I can also move this in the 2D editor. Again, it's just sometimes you have the uh, misfortune of moving it on the Y axis or the X axis when you didn't mean to or accidentally you know, moving it too far off. So it's, I find it's a lot nicer of a user experience to move it in the actual coordinates and the parameters, but again, you have the option to do whatever you want. 
And so let's take a look. We'll see that we've gone from something like this to something a little bit more straight. And again, not super critical in this example, but I'm sure you'll find and you've maybe already experienced. Um, there are some pretty outrageously curved pieces on some of the atlases that are available online, which unfortunately just kind of become almost unusable depending on the degree with which uh, they are curved or bent. And finally, just taking a look, we'll see that this has worked across all of our input texture channels. Again, uh, just alleviating you from having to worry about a confusing uh, node network to try and blend this all together. Now to close things off, I just wanted to show a quick demonstration of me kind of just working with all of the plant nodes in conjunction with one another. So we've got our plant propagate nodes, which are separating individual cutouts. I'm using the plant splint nodes to straighten them out and get a proper alignment for what I want. And then finally, I'm culminating all of this and assembling it using the plant press node. Now, if you're not familiar with plant press, it's another node that I've created previously that allows us to basically create our atlas using our individual pieces, as well as an input bark texture or material, which you're also going to be able to tile uh, seamlessly across the vertical and horizontal axis there. So you don't have to worry about any of the tiling again or the blends. Uh, you just have to simply input the textures and the nodes are going to handle the rest. If you're interested in plant press, also take a look up at the top right where I've got another video. And as always, thanks for checking this out, guys. Please feel free to leave any questions you have, and I'll be happy to answer them. Cheers.